The Bible says that as Jesus and his disciples approached Jerusalem, he sent two of them to get a donkey and her colt. This fulfilled the prophecy in Zechariah. Behold, your king is coming to you. Righteous and having salvation is he, humble and mounted on a donkey, on a colt, the foal of a donkey. Jesus mounted the donkey and rode into Jerusalem. Many laid their cloaks on the road before him and brought palm branches to wave and celebrate. Hosanna in the highest heaven. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna to the son of David. But not all who were there understood him. Some called him only a prophet, believing him wise, but denying his divinity. Some raged and cheered for a revolution, hoping he would liberate them from their oppressors. To others, he was nothing more than an interruption. Even as children ran to him and shouted for joy, his enemies wove through the crowd, watching, seething, plotting. The range of reactions was great and wide. Celebration, worship, revolutions, deception, cynicism, condemnation, boredom, disinterest. But every single person had to confront one thing, who he was. Behold, your king is coming to you. Good morning. My name is Cindy Sheely, and I'd like to welcome you to our Zoom worship service this morning. We're able to gather together today thanks to technology and celebrate Palm Sunday which marks the beginning of Holy Week. Today is a day of celebration for we know our King is coming. Hosanna in the highest, they cried, but we know that this celebration was short-lived. God has a different plan in store. He was providing a way to set us free eternally. Will you please pray with me? Dear God, thank you for sending your son and paving the way for our lives to be set free free through Jesus. Palm Sunday is the start of the journey toward the power of the cross, the victory of the resurrection, and the truth that Jesus is our King of Kings. Blessed is the one who comes in the name of the Lord. Please increase our faith. Listen to our prayers as we honor you this day. Help us to always live in you and glorify your name. Amen. Oh, love. 
Merciful God, we confess that all too often we have been part of the crowd that shouted, crucify him. Forgive us for the times we have betrayed, doubted, turned away, and denied you. Forgive us of our faults and mistrust, and renew in us a sense of your love, justice, and mercy. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. It is God who holds our lives, healing us when we are broken, forgiving us when we do wrong. Thus, I declare to you that in the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. In the name of Jesus Christ, your sins are forgiven. Thanks be to God. Amen. Good morning, everyone. This is the time during the service that we can bring our joys and concerns to our church family. So if you'll raise your hand, Pastor David will recognize you, and afterward we will all pray together. We'll go, uh, we'll go first with uh, uh, Jack and then with Bob. Okay, uh, we have a joy. Uh, as of Friday night, we are now great-grandparents uh, to uh, Ellie Lucas, so our first great-grandchild. Great. I want to get in on that, too. <laughs> <laughs> her, yeah. name is, her name is Ellie. Yeah. Ellie Lucas, seven yeah. pounds, I think uh, seven pounds, 12 ounces. Beautiful. <laughs> Congratulations. Very exciting. Yes. Thank you. Bob? Yes, we got word this morning from our, our son Dick's family. His wife's father passed away about 6.30 this morning. Hmm. Sorry to hear about that. Receive our sympathy and extend it to, to your family, please. Thank you. Any other prayers? Uh, Amy? Um, I'm asking for prayers for Rod's cousin, Mark Mixter. He got diagnosed this week with an inoperable brain cancer. So we're asking for prayers for him and for the family. Sorry for your loss. So. Anybody else? Uh, I don't see any other hands. Uh, Jenny's. Thank the Lord for being here this morning. Um, it was busy week. Busy, busy week last week. And I still have some um, Alabama people here. So, but um, I am so happy that um, Malik made the step. His wedding was beautiful. I, it was very beautiful. And um, small, but beautiful. And some people attended on Zoom. So that this Zoom thing is pretty cool. And um, I just want you to pray for them as young people that God touches their lives and, you know, and make a way out of no way in some instances. And they do have a baby coming in May. So just keep them in your prayers. Yes, congratulations. Steve. Yes, Pastor, a couple, a couple of things. Uh, Num number one, we certainly appreciate the prayers for my daughter. She found out from Mayo that uh, tests came back uh, benign, which is, just confirms what North Shore had said. That's one thing. One of my bus driver buddies, um, his sister-in-law just, just went through cancer surgery. She's going through six weeks of chemo, and he asked that we keep Connie in our prayers. And then I also heard through Barry that uh, Brian Crum 
uh, has has uh, cancer, and uh, Brian is a former member. I, I, we see, see him around a little bit, but let's keep Brian Brian in our <laughs> prayers. Jill and Alyssa are still in church, and um, we we definitely want to keep him in our thoughts and prayers. Yes, uh, yes, we we share that uh, on Saturday, and please uh, uh, keep Brian, who is our young person, of course, and. And he just went for tests and found out that he has cancer. So, and prayers for the family too. Thank you. Any other prayers? I don't see. Oh, okay. Uh, Faith, uh, yes, please lead us in prayer. Please pray with me. Gracious God, we give you thanks for this day and for the opportunity to be together and worship you. We turn to you in our darkest times for strength and guidance. We are in need of your care and healing. We pray for our South Asian brothers and sisters who are victims of discrimination and racism. Lord, we hold out to you our cares and prayers for those who need healing time, hopeful days, and healthy recoveries. We pray for happiness for Jack and Mary Ann's new great-granddaughter, Ellie. We congratulate and pray for Janice, for her grandson Malik, who just got married. Father, be with Bob, his son's wife's family passed away. Give them strength and may they feel your loving arms around them. Amy has asked for prayers for Mark and the family and also for Brian. Father, we thank you for the good news for Rebecca. And we ask that you keep Connie close and bring her healing. All of this we pray in the name of God who taught us to pray this prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread. And forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Good morning. Our scripture reading this morning is from Mark 11, verses 1 to 11. Now when they drew near to Jerusalem, to Bethphage and Bethana, at the Mount of Olives, Jesus sent two of his disciples and said to them, go into the village in front of you, and immediately as you enter, you will find a colt tied, on which no one has ever sat. Untie it and bring it. If anyone says to you, why are you doing this? Say, the Lord has need of it, and will send it back here immediately. And they went away and found a colt tied at the door outside in the street, and they untied it. And some of those standing there said to them, what are you doing untying the colt? And they told him what Jesus had said, and they let them go. And they brought the colt to Jesus and threw the cloaks on it, and he sat on it. And many spread their cloaks on the road, and others spread leafy branches that they had cut from the fields. And those who went before and those who followed were shouting, Hosanna! Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Blessed is the coming kingdom of our father, David. Hosanna in the highest. And he entered Jerusalem and went into the temple. And when he had looked around at everything, as it was ready, already late, he went out to Bethany and with the twelve. This is the word of God for the people of God. Thanks be to God. Amen. Amen. Okay, give me just a second here. All right. Well, uh, we, we have heard this story many times, and we know that Jesus is in Jerusalem to celebrate Passover. Uh, he is not alone, and probably you don't know this, or you haven't heard this before, but there are two parades into Jerusalem on this day, and historians uh, 
Jewish historians have said that uh, during that day, there were two parades at the same time. Passing through the city wall from the west is Pontius Pilate, who is the governor uh, of the land, Roman governor, and he is leading a procession of Roman cavalry and foot soldiers into the city. And they are there not to celebrate the holiday, they are there to show who is in charge. They are there to keep order. Because remember that Passover is a celebration of the liberation of the uh, uh, Israelites from an, an earlier uh, imperial uh, regime in the Egyptians. And the Romans do not want people of Jerusalem to get any ideas that they can be free again. And on the other side, on the east side of town, there is another parade, but it's a smaller one. But it's a di very different one. And Mark tells us that Jesus entered the city on the back of a donkey. I mean, what a contrast with his, the governor, you know, on a stallion. Jesus on a donkey. In fact, Jesus uh, was drawing on the prophetic symbolism of, of the Hebrew Bible in his choice of mount. The prophet uh, Zechariah predicted the ride of a king, you know, on a colt, the fall of a donkey, that he would be the, the nonviolent king who would liberate Israel from its uh, enemies. So there are two parades going on at, on this day. One parade is a display of power to intimidate, and the other is a show of love to liberate. And those who watch that day, I'm sure will make a choice. And by the end of the day, they had made a choice. But if I were to ask you, you know, which parade are you watching? Which parade will you follow? Can you let me know? Well, it's just a question. But certainly if we had been there, we would make a choice. See, Palm Sunday begins uh, with, with the waving of, you know, palm branches and singing hymns and people shouting, Hosanna, Hosanna, Hosanna to the son of David. And I, I must admit that, that the word Hosanna is a kind of con, con, contraction of the word Yoshana. Uh, it's a strange word. It's not a term that comes up in everyday conversation. And, um, but we have used the word like 12 times during the year. Um, when was the last time you said that word? Can you, can anyone let me know? Well, you use that word last communion. Remember the words uh, of communion? That's where you, we use the word Hosanna. Hosanna, blessed is he who, who comes in the name of the Lord. Scholars uh, define Hosanna as save, I pray. And they quote uh, Psalm 118, verse 25, which makes reference to this word. Save us, we beseech you, O Lord. And of course, it is clear that the palm wavers are going out to meet Jesus in hopes that, you know, he, he will crush and remove from Israel another great enemy, this time Rome. And I think we, we can understand that uh, during this whole year when, when we have been through this pandemic, I'm sure many of us have said this word many times, save us, I pray, save us from this virus, save us from these racial tensions, save us from these divisions. And in a more personal note, I'm sure we have said, you know, save us from these problems or from this addiction or save my marriage, save me from being broken. Well, the thing is, Jesus knows what he is getting into because he's also, uh, I'm sure, say, saying, you know, 
Uh, at one point, actually, Jesus says, save me. I mean, what do I say to, to God? Save me from this cup, to save me from this ordeal. But he knows he's coming to save, to save us. So he knows what he is getting into. Not only is he heading towards those who are plotting his death, but also he is going to Jerusalem to disappoint his followers in a grand fashion. I mean, yeah, because Jesus is not the kind of king they are expecting. Jesus will not bring regime change. He's not going to do that. Why? Because Jesus is not committed to a path of glory. You know, they expected the king like David, you know, a, a kind of a warrior. But Jesus is more committed to a, a path of defeat. I mean, he will not reign from a palace, but from a cross. And he's not going to rescue or save the world by taking over, but by self-giving love. In obedience to the Father, doing the will of God. So from birth to death, Jesus, you know, did not come to meet our expectations of what a king should be like. He came to meet our deepest needs. Our need to have a relationship with God. Our need to be, you know, at one with God. Our need for salvation. And the thing is, when it became apparent that Jesus was not the Messiah people expected, you know, things went south. The crowd's jubilation quickly vanished. Things turned ugly and sour because the crowd changes their mind and their allegiance. And I think we can understand that. I mean, we've been through a year that has, or last year, and some of this year, that we've been through a lot where we have been, you know, divided against each other, when we have been fighting and vilifying each other, demeaning each other, cheering and then jeering. And here we have in this story, Jesus the victor on Palm Sunday, and then Jesus the villain by Thursday night. Oh my gosh, I mean, if... if if Jesus had you know, ratings, top ratings, and he would be on Facebook, everyone would follow him. But when you have a serious drop in the ratings, it seems that everyone abandons you. And when you dash people's highest hopes, which is for salvation from the Romans, and not salvation from hell, it's salvation from the Romans. When you severe... Uh, when you, you dash those uh, hopes severely is not a surprise that you end up on a cross by the end of the week. Maybe you are wondering, how could people call for Jesus to be crowned one day and crucify the next? I mean, I wonder the same, but I don't we like people like that. You know, I don't we the same. As some wise philosopher once said, today's rooster is tomorrow's feather duster. You know, one day you're riding the crest of public opinion wave, and the next, the wave is well and truly broken. And you are, you are the wipeout. And the thing is, we could talk about this, you know, give all sorts of explanations about failed expectations, about the psych psychology of crowd behavior, and how people will get swept along in a mob mentality and do things that they would never do on their own with time to think about it. We know that, we've seen that. But as illuminating as these things might be, you know, to talk about them, I don't think we need to do that. Because I think if we really, if we really want to understand how these people could sing Jesus' praises one day and call for his death the next, I don't think we need to look any further than ourselves. You know, ourselves, the contents of our own hearts and the quality of our own behavior. And you see, my, my guess is that most of you are not that different from me. And I, I know, 
I know a little of what I am capable of. You know, I can I can be here and sing praises to Jesus one day, and and, and walk by on the other side of the road as he lies in a gutter the next. And I don't think I am alone. I mean, you see, it is easy to cheer for Jesus, you know, to wave our palm branches and to sing praises. It is not difficult to join in the singing here in each Sunday, you know, and honor Jesus as Messiah. But what do those praises mean when you are behind closed doors and away from the public eye? How, how do those words affect you when nobody is watching? You know, ask your, yourself this question. If I had been in Jerusalem that day and had seen both processions passing by, which would I have chosen to follow? Because that, that is the choice we make each day. To choose power and might or, or love to choose the way things are done over the way God intends them to be. So we have two theologies, two processions, two choices. Which would you choose? Knowing the story of Palm Sunday, we must ask ourselves, what part are we going to play as Jesus stays in Jerusalem? Do we want to make Jesus king for a day or Lord of our lives? And are we going to leave Jesus before his ratings go down or are we going to follow him all the way through? How willing are we to follow when following becomes costly? You know, can Jesus count on us this week? Dear brothers and sisters, I hope that we continue to accompany Jesus during this Holy Week because that's the real answer to these questions, to all our questions we have about life and the way he did things, in the way he went to the cross to die for our, for our sins to take the sins of the world upon his shoulders, to give us freedom, to give us salvation. So may this Holy Week bring us new revelations, you know, deeper faith. And I hope a holy discomfort on our way to the empty tomb. Dear brothers and sisters, blessings on your journey. Amen.
Dear brothers and sisters, it's always uh, great to see you. And I would like to remind you that uh, we will have a, a Good Friday service, uh, Friday at 7. It will be uh, via Zoom. And um, you can join us that day. Um, the uh, link will be the same link we use for all the services uh, um, on Sunday. So you don't have to look for a new link. It will be the same. And now as we go our separate ways, uh, I hope that uh, we continue to use the word Hosanna. Lord, save us. And may this blessed word remain with us during this week. And God grant us all um, to follow faithfully where Christ uh, leads us. And may you all know uh, God's uh, courage and certainty that God is there with us all the way through. And now uh, may the peace of God, which surpasses all understanding, guard your hearts and your minds in Christ. In the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. <laughs>